Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming and Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today we're going to be continuing our series on VBA or Visual Basic for Applications. Today's topic is going to be a continuation of our discussion on events. And we're going to get into a little bit more of a practical example of how events can be useful. And you may not think right now that they really apply and you can't really, I mean, there are people, trust me, there are coders out there that never use events. They never go and create their own custom events. And they're really missing out on some great functionality within Access. And I really hope that this can demonstrate some of the neat functionality that you can get by using your own custom events. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. And I'm going to go into our database here. And the first thing that I want to do, and the first thing I want to point out is, I want to show you that form underscore form form, that is this form that we're working on here, is considered an access class object. Okay, so it is a class object. Just as these are class objects down here, so are these forms. Okay, these are classes here, and these are classes here. So, because this is a class, what I can do is I can declare a custom event inside of my form. So I can go ahead and declare a public event, and I'm going to call it message changed, oops, changed, and into it I'm going to pass in a message as a string. Okay, so I'm able to declare a public event inside of one of my forms. And even if it was a report, okay, I could also declare events in reports, which is really, really cool. I, both forms and reports, I can create my own custom events. Now what I'm going to do is I want to raise this event when somebody types something in here. When somebody, whenever somebody's starting to type something in, I want to capture whatever it is that they're typing and send it to something. Okay, I'm going to raise an event with whatever it is that they've typed in so far. So I'm going to go to the on change event, which is triggered whenever somebody starts typing something in this text box. Okay, so not when they've exited it, but when they are in the process of changing the value that's in here. So we're going to go to the on change event here, go to the code builder. And in here, I'm just going to go ahead and raise event message changed, that custom event that I created, and I'm going to pass in the txt message dot text. Okay, and maybe just so people don't get confused, this is from the from the form that I'm currently in. Okay, so this text property we haven't used up to this point, but text and value are two different things. You may have seen me use me dot txt message dot value in the past. The difference between text and value is that value is only set as the property of the object when the value has has been or when the the um, text message text box has been exited. Okay, when somebody has left it and they've lost the focus, whenever the text box lost focus, that's when the value property gets set to whatever somebody typed in the text of the text box. But since we're getting the value during the time that it's being changed, if I try to grab the value, it won't work, okay? Because the value is only set one time, and that is when the person exits or gets out of this text box. So I have to use the text property instead because it is the current value of whatever is currently typed in the text box, okay? So that's the difference that you need to understand and why we're using the text property as opposed to the value property. So we're going to go ahead and raise the event message changed. Me.txt message.text is the message that we're passing in. So whatever somebody's typing in is going to be put into this message parameter here. Okay? Let's go ahead and save that and debug it, and we'll see we don't have any sort of errors. Exactly what we're looking for. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a new form. And let me go ahead and shrink this down here. Because I don't like really excessive large uh, spaces. I only like spaces that I need to work with. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these really irritating record selectors and navigation buttons. Oops, where'd I go here? Navigation buttons. Get rid of those, so those will go away. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead and make this a pop-up. 
Okay, so it'll show up on our screen here as a pop-up box. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this subscriber, okay, I'm going to make this new form a subscriber to the event, this custom event that we created here, right? We have this custom event message changed. Now I need to subscribe to it from this form, okay? And to do that, I'm going to first go to my on load event here. I could really do it on the on open, but I'm going to do it in the on load first. And I'm going to fix up here option explicit, because I always like that to be at the top of my modules here. Now, I need to, in order to create a subscriber, I've got to create an instance of whatever this object is, right? I need to create an instance of the object in order for me to grab the events from it. So I'm going to de declare a private uh, with events, and we're going to call it message form as, and you'll see in the drop down here, we get a list that is much smaller than we get normally whenever we're declaring an object. That's because these are the our only classes that have events in them, okay? So, uh, like we were talking about before in the last video, how there's, you know, we could do the drop down, and that was kind of a, a, a way to make sure that you're doing things right. Well, since I'm using the with events keyword, as soon as I get done typing the as, I get a drop down of only events where I can subscribe to an event from that object. And I should see my form that has that custom event that I created. And if I didn't declare my custom event correctly, then it wouldn't be available here for me to select. So that's kind of a neat little way to check to make sure you've done everything properly in this form to declare your event and raise it, okay? So now, let me go back to the form here. So we know that we've got a form properly created. Now we need to go ahead and use that set keyword. Remember, we needed to do the set. We're gonna set message form equal to now, this may mess with your mind a little bit, but normally what we did in the past is we used the new keyword, and then we went like form underscore form uh, form form, okay? And the problem with this is that I don't want to create a new form. I've already got a form that's going to be open. All I want to do is I want to look at whatever is going on inside of it. Once it's open, I want to actually subscribe to the events that are on it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to, instead of doing a new form, I'm going to look in the collection of forms and pass to it the name of the form that should be open. Remember, there, there is one caveat to this. When we look in this forms collection, we and the form must be open, otherwise this is going to kick out an error. So in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a little error handler here. So on, uh, on error, go to, uh, or let's do resume next. We'll just do that. Okay, and that's just in case this form isn't already open. I don't want to pop up a message to my user that says, you know, there's some sort of problem that they don't understand. Okay, so now my set message form equals forms, and then I'm grabbing the form form. Okay, and then I'm assigning it to the message form object, which has the with events keyword on it. So we're looking at the events that this form has on it, and if any one of them are triggered, then we're going to do something. And now, when I click on the drop down here, lo and behold, there's my message form object, and the only event that's available is message change, so it automatically created my subroutine for me. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set me.caption equal to whatever the message is. All right, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and save this now as form other form. I know, real creative naming, right? Right? <laughs> okay, save it again. I'll hit the debug here, make sure everything works. Yep, there's no errors there. And now, let's go ahead and see this in action. Close that. And now, let me go ahead and open this form. 
And then I'm going to open up the other form, and you see it's popping up a text message here, right? I'm going to make this a little bit bigger here. Now, as I start typing something into my text message, watch what happens to this form other form. Okay? So I can actually customize, I can actually send an event to this other window entirely and manipulate information on this form using events, okay? Because this this window is subscribing to any changes that are going on in this text box. Isn't that pretty cool? I can affect other windows at the same time. So what about if I have another form? What if I want another form to also be subscribing to this? Because this is kind of the wonderful thing about creating your own custom events, is you can make other forms. Actually, I'm just going to go ahead and copy this other form here and paste it. I'm going to call it form another form. All right. Like I said, really creative here. Oops. Let's go to my forms. Where'd my forms go? There we go. Okay. And instead of doing the caption thing, let's go ahead and set a label here that says something. All right. Right now, the default text is just something and LBL, let's call it uh, message. So I gotta name my label here. And what I'm gonna do is in the events, in the onload, instead of having the caption change, actually I'm gonna go ahead and add to it that me.label message dot caption equals message. So not only am I going to change the caption on this particular text box, but I'm also going to change the caption of the label. Okay. And now, let's go ahead and open up other form and another form. So now both of them are up here. Let's go ahead and make them nice and big here so you can see. And as I change what's in here, you can see I'm affecting the other both windows simultaneously okay so both this window and this window are being affected by what I by what I do in this window and that's all because of the custom event that I have set up in the background let me just show you one more time because I want to be thorough here about how this is all working I'm gonna go ahead and set in my on change event, I'm going to go ahead and set a breakpoint here. And we'll move through the code as this is happening. Okay? So, other form and another form. Let's go ahead and set these two down here, make them a little bit bigger so we can see what those captions say. And now I'm going to go ahead and delete what's in here. Okay? And that's going to trigger the change, which is a little bit of an annoyance there. Let me just go ahead and let that go here. Okay, now I'm going to start typing. So let's go H. See, here's the change. So the, the change event is triggered on that text box called TXT message. And that's going to raise our custom event message changed, which again up here is a public event called message changed. And we're passing in a message to that event. And what's going to happen is the first subscriber that it happens upon is my form other form, okay? And it sees this message changed, has, has been triggered, okay? This message changed event has been triggered, and it grabs the message, which is right now just H, and puts it into the caption of that window. And you can see we jump now to form underscore form another form, and we can see it also has the same subscription to that message, uh, to that message changed event and it's getting the message H and it's setting the caption for the both the title of the window and for the caption of that label and sets those values to whatever we typed in there and that's the end of our raise event and we're done and we can see now H is the caption on both windows and H is here in my label Okay, so that's just some of the neat functionality you can do with events and why you would want to use custom events. And trust me, 
these have a far, far reaching impact on your ability to do some stuff that uh, is really highly advanced stuff. And, and, and we may even get into some of that in my more advanced uh, lessons a little bit later on. But hopefully you can take some of what you've learned here and use it for your own application.